Welcome everyone. It's great to have you here today for this outreach session on small business wholesale opportunities. I am your host, Amy Benson with Unibuy Redamco Westfield. URW is the commercial program manager responsible for the redevelopment of the concessions programs for JFK International Airport at both the new Terminal 1 and American Airlines Terminal 8. In partnership with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, we are pleased to work with the new Terminal 1, the new ground-up international terminal being built as the global gateway to the New York metropolitan area. We are also pleased to represent American Airlines Terminal 8, which is in the midst of a major commercial redevelopment of their concessions program. As part of these developments, URW is looking to partner with local women and minority-owned businesses for concessions merchandising, retail, and dining opportunities. We are delighted you have chosen to join us for this outreach session as we look to create economic opportunities for the community and build programs that showcase New York's world-renowned shopping and culinary scene. Next slide. So why are we here today? Well, today's session will introduce you to the URW team and provide a project update from our partners. You will learn more about wholesale product merchandising opportunities in airports for brands and food and gain knowledge on the types of products that are fit for airport operations. The goal of this session is to determine what's a good fit for your business plan and aspirations, and if our upcoming in-person event focused on local product makers for wholesale opportunities is right for you. Finally, we will close with Q&A, and you will learn how to get in touch with resources on our team that can support your success. Next slide. So a few housekeeping points as we start today's program. The session is being recorded and will be posted on our website for replay along with the presentation. We will open the floor to questions later in the program. So if you have a question at any time during the presentation, add that question in the Q&A tab in the engagement panel on the right side of your screen. Mobile users can access Q&A using the Q&A button below the live stream video feed. We will be registering, by registering for today's event, you are also now on URW's diverse supplier list and will receive project updates. So let's go to the next slide and meet our speakers today. As mentioned before, my name is Amy Benson, and I'm the VP of Marketing for URW. And I am also executive sponsor of URW's Advanced Network, focused on growing small, local, minority, and women-owned diverse business opportunities across our portfolio. Please welcome Ashley Harry, Director of Leasing with URW. Ashley is responsible for leasing the new Terminal 1 and Terminal 8, and brings great expertise on small business opportunities and partnerships with the community. From the new Terminal 1, please welcome Dana Malone, Director of Revenue. Dana is responsible for NTO's commercial plan, including the curation of a world-class retail and dining experience. And finally, please welcome Jeff Corum, Head of JFK T8 Commercial Affairs with American Airlines. Jeff oversees the commercial redevelopment at Terminal 8 to elevate and transform the shop and restaurant offerings. Let's go to the next slide. So to kick off our program and to take us through an update on the new Terminal 1, I'd like to introduce Dana Malone, Director of Revenue with NTO. Welcome, Dana. Dana, you're on mute. Sorry about that, everyone. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, my name is Dana Malone and I'm the Revenue Director at the new Terminal One. I just wanted to say thank you all for joining us today as we explore some of these incredible and exciting opportunities at JFK. I am thrilled to share that this project is becoming truly a pivotal moment, not only for JFK Airport, but also for the many local businesses that will be part of our transformative journey. Uh, the new Terminal One represents a $9.5 billion private investment that will redefine the international travel through JFK. We're going to have 23 wide body gates and it's a 2.4 million square foot facility. This terminal is truly set to become a global gateway, welcoming travels from all over the world. In addition to being a world class transportation hub, the new Terminal One is going to offer 160,000 square feet of commercial space dedicated to food, beverage and retail opportunities. 
Phase A of our project is scheduled to be opened in June 2026, with the entire project being completed by 2020, 2030. Um, and we are currently on schedule and on budget for the project, which is very exciting. Um, I am pleased to announce that we already have commitments from major airlines such as Air France, KLM, Lot Polish, Etihad, Korean, Asiana, Eva Air, Air Serbia, SAS, and we even have a partnership underway with Air China. These partnerships really do underscore the global significance of our projects. Um, so we are excited to dive into dive in with you today on how you can become a part of this exciting development here at the new Terminal One by leveraging the immense foot traffic and global visibility that the new Terminal One will offer. Uh, whether you're in food and beverage or retail or other commercial ventures, the opportunities here are vast, and we're here to help you navigate and succeed in the dynamic environment. Um, so with that, I'll hand it back over to Amy to guide us through the rest of today's session. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dana, for that overview on the new Terminal 1. I know momentum is definitely building at NTO. So next, let's get an update on the Terminal 8 commercial redevelopment. I'd like to bring to the stage Jeff Corum, head of JFK T8 Commercial Affairs with American Airlines. Please welcome hey. Jeff. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I'm excited to, to be on the call today and introduce uh, Terminal 8 and what we've got going on. Um, so Terminal 8 has just completed a recent expansion, adding new gates, a new bag system, um, and all new lounges. Um, and in terms of overall construction at our terminal, um, what we've got left, I think, is, is the most exciting. We're, we're going through right now a um, $125 million commercial uh, redevelopment, which is going to redo every single concession space in the entire terminal. If you've passed through Terminal 8 in the last few years, um, what you're picturing now will be completely different than what you see um, in just a few years' times. Um, but to talk a little bit more about Terminal 8, for those of you that um, have not stepped through the terminal before, uh, Terminal 8 is currently the home of 10 all international airlines, American Airlines, of course, being the tenant. Um, we are the second biggest terminal right now in terms of international traffic. Um, and so we've got a huge, diverse population of passengers and employees that come through the terminal every day. Uh, and I'm really excited to see um, all of these spaces that are going to be redone. There will be, when all is said and done, 60 plus new shopping and dining spaces all throughout the terminal. Um, so it's, it's going to be super, super exciting. And I would love it um, if those of you on the call uh, were able to participate um, in this. We've got our first store that just, our first new concession that just opened a few weeks ago and we expect more to open throughout this year and of course next year. Um, so I will pass it back over to Amy, but I'm excited to, um, to meet those of you that are on the call. Thanks Jeff for that great update. Let's now switch gears and receive an overview of the airport commercial program and learn more about wholesale partnership opportunities. I'm happy to introduce Ashley Harry, leasing director for URW to take you through this overview. Welcome Ashley. Thanks, Amy, and um, thanks everybody for joining today. We know, you know, everybody's got a lot of competing priorities. There's a lot happening. Um, so this is part one of a two-part series, which Amy had mentioned, and we will kind of clue you in on step two in person. So um, as a precursor to that, we thought it was really important to make sure, you know, you're in the right place, that your time is well spent. We know there's a lot of opportunity right now in JFK. Um, and so we're happy you could be here with us today. So what we are looking at, if you have not joined us, is just kind of an overview of our concession categories um, or typical categories you see within the airport space. So starting on the left, you have duty free for the international guests, um, which you heard from both uh, Dana and Jeff that we have quite a quite a bit of those between T1 and T8. Uh, moving on to the travel essentials, sometimes known as news and gifts. Um, these first two that I just mentioned, duty-free travel essentials, are really good opportunities for local retail product makers to, um, to solidify shelf space within these units as, a, as an easier entry point than coming in and doing your own store. Um, as you probably know, costs at an airport are very high, right? And, and that's not getting uh, any cheaper anytime soon, as far as we can tell. 
So product is something we are very passionate about and I will talk a little bit more about, but I wanted to make sure you understood, um, you know, where you're best suited to fit. Moving on to food and beverage, um, you know, we do have wholesale product opportunities in this category as well. So, you know, I've met a lot of people over the last few years. Um, you know, we have a woman who partners with food and beverage concept to provide a dessert or an empanada, right? Let's say maybe you've got the best empanadas in Queens. Um, we certainly want to kind of bring that to life through a partner if, if you're not quite ready to come in and do your own thing in the space. Um, and then moving on, we have specialty retail and service. So specialty retail, things like travel, I'm sorry, tech, um, service, things like spa, um, et cetera. So just so you kind of understand the differences. And again, this will be available for you after this um, and online to view if you wanted to kind of go through some more detail. Uh, moving on. All right, so the next thing is that's important to understand in this kind of environment. We are specifically here today to talk about what is in the red column. There are a lot of different types of ways to participate in the airport space. We are going to be focused today and at our September event on concession, retail, food and beverage, product and service only. So if you are a design, construction, professional services company, um, there are better suited events for you to participate and attend. Um, so if we focus back here on the red column, what we are looking to do is meet, meet the local product makers, right? We, we want to know you. We want to find you. We want to partner you with the people who can give you an opportunity in the space. Um, there's lots of ways to get involved. Product is one. Automated retail is one. Um, part, brand partnerships, license and franchise deals you know, commissary kitchens, there's lots of ways, right? But for the purpose of today and our September in-person event, we're really going to be talking specifically around wholesale food and beverage and um, retail opportunities. Um, the last thing I think I, that's important to point out here is, um, you know, there are businesses and entrepreneurs who come into the airport space and don't represent a product or a brand, um, but really they are an equity partner in some of these deals. So there is a lot of value in that as well, which we will be hosting a future event around. Um, so more to come there. I just wanted to call it out. Uh, next slide. Okay, so in preparation for September's event, the people we would like to meet and we would like to attend where we believe it is going to be time well spent are dry retail makers who can fit well within duty-free um, and travel retail. So if you think about, you know, travel retail, Hudson News, WH Smith, those type of things, you, sure, you have your travel essentials, right? But you also have some souvenirs, some local products from the local area, the regional area, that um, it's a really good opportunity to kind of put yourselves in front of somebody who wasn't necessarily looking for you or didn't know you existed or and now maybe be, become one of your biggest fans, right? Um, duty free, we have a 5% local product requirement um, on that project or both of those projects in TAT1. That is incredibly powerful, which what that means for everybody on this call is that out of all the SKUs or all the products we have in duty free, 5% are, are required to be local. Um, and what that translates to is between 500 to 800 square feet of, of local products on shelves. Um, so incredibly impactful and a ton of opportunities for you, you all to kind of come and learn about in September. Food and beverage I touched on, right? I think lots of different products in food and beverage. We've met, you know, um, canned beverage companies. We've met um yeah, sweets, confectioners, we've met, you know, you name it, we've met it, right? We know you're, you're out there. We know you exist. We want to figure out how to partner you with a prime operator who can take on the onus of the, the capital and the, and the heavy kind of financial burden and give you the opportunity to get your foot in the door in the airport and kind of really start to learn the space, meet the partners and expand, right? We don't look at this as a one and done. Um, our wholesale partners really come in in small capacities and they start to scale. Um, Brown Sugar Bakery on the right hand photo here is somebody we worked with in Chicago um, at ORDT5, which is a program we also run. She got a very small start um, 
because of a very unfortunate incident at her her um, bakery. And she started with some, some very limited food products through um, a local grocer or what we call goddess and grocer over there in Chicago through a food operator, let's say. Um, she had a great success there. So now she's expanded to a uh, partnership with Hudson, right, where she has the opportunity to put forward more product, um, meet more customers where they're kind of looking for her product. And um, gosh, you name it, now she is involved in it. So, you know, I think this is a good illustration of how powerful this entry point can be. Um, one thing about the September event that I just want everybody to know is we will have the airport prime concessionaires in the in the room, right? Those are the people who you can do the deals with. We, URW, our role in this is really to get everybody in the same room to do the deals, right? So the September event is incredibly powerful if this is something you are interested in. Um, and I'll go to the next slide. Turn it back over to you, Amy. Great, thank you, Ashley. And thank you for all of our speakers for sharing your knowledge with our audience today. Well, you may be asking what's next. So how do I make these connections and meet these potential business partners for opportunity? Well, we're excited to meet you. So let's go to the next side slide. The first step is really going to be to get in touch. So if you haven't met them yet, RF Wilkins Consultants is our partner who provides key education, capacity building, and certification expertise to the local community. And they're hosting office hours on Wednesdays at the JFK Redevelopment Center. Quentin Bailey, who is our project management specialist with RFW, is going to be joining us shortly to help answer some questions. Quentin is really a great resource on navigating partnership opportunities, and he can offer advice and support. I'd really encourage anyone who's new and this is your first time to one of our outreach sessions and you're interested in doing business with our commercial program at JFK to reach out to info URW at rfwconsultants.com. And if you happen to be here and you're interested in architecture, engineering, or construction opportunities, we would encourage you to visit a new JFK.com. So let's go to the next slide. So What's next? Well, we would say step two is mark that calendar. So on Wednesday, September 18th from nine to noon at the Queen's Chamber of Commerce, we will be hosting that in-person event for small business wholesale opportunities. So we're really encouraging local product makers interested in speaking directly with operators about wholesale selling opportunities in the airport to attend. So the first QR code you can scan is on that screen is to register for this in-person event. So please scan and register now. And that second QR code screen is uh, uh, QR code on the screen is going to take you to a list of additional outreach events that are scheduled later this fall. So let's go to the next slide. So that is the end of today's presentation. And what we're going to do is now open the floor to questions for our panelists. We've received a number of questions coming in. So I'm going to invite Ashley and Quentin to the stage for the Q&A. Welcome, Quentin. Good afternoon. All right, so we received a number of questions for the audience, and as a reminder, if you do have a question, please use the question function to submit your question, and we will answer them now. So, Ashley, looks like the first question is for you. Um, are you looking for established brands or mom and pop brands? Yes, yeah, so um, both. The answer is both, right? We um, some people are mature businesses who come into the airport space is kind of their next step. Some people um, have a really great product for travel where this is kind of where they get their start. I think for those who are newer, um, this is an opportunity to be um, at a lower financial risk, you know, test the water, see if it's for you, see if your product moves it within this environment. Thanks, Ashley. Another question for you. Um, we're getting a number of questions about how do I prepare for the September event you mentioned? So how should people prep and what should they plan to, to bring to this event or be prepared to do at this event? So um, we will be, for everybody that's registering, we will be sending details out, I'd say within the next week or so around um, if there's anything specific we would be looking for from the product makers. If we were 
you know, looking for samples. Um, until we give you those details, I would say just, you know, prepare yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, I know it's busy. It's a busy day. Um, anyways, while we wait for any additional details, prepare yourself, prepare your business. Um, if you have a one sheet or one page or about you and your company and kind of what you do, what your value is, what your value proposition is, um, you know, certainly re up your business cards, make sure you have some in hand to hand out that day. Um, and just come prepared to network, right? That's why we are providing this platform is to meet and greet and network, um, with each other and with people who might have an opportunity for you. Thanks, Thanks. Ashley. Mm -hmm. um, next question. Uh, could you talk a little bit about food and beverage products? So does the product include draft beer or food? Yeah, so look, I think um, surface level, you know, people, when they think F&B, they think I need, you know, I need my own store, I need my own kitchen, but really like, there are tons of opportunities. We we love to work with, you know, a local brewery or, or winery that might have, you know, a very specific JFK in New York, Queens um, brewing story. And we can bring that to life through a, a tap, you know, in somebody else's restaurant um, where you can kind of start to get some exposure to the to the passengers, right, and the international customers and even the domestic customers. Um, you know, I mentioned dessert is a really great one. Uh, you know, every menu, every restaurant and every quick serve has sweets and treats and things on their menu, right? They could feature a product locally made, sourced and made in Queens or in New York. Um, so I would say it's, you know, think about that in a bigger kind of scope. Don't, you know, take it another 20,000, 30,000 feet up. If you have something very unique um, that you feel like is the best of the best and, um, should be featured, this is a great way to kind of start the process of learning the airport environment. Thanks, Ashley. Quinton, I have a question for you. So if I'm looking to have my product placed in a retail store at JFK, sure. do you advise getting ATE certified, certified in addition to WOSB? Quentin, did you hear me? You're breaking up just a little bit at the end, uh, Amy. I believe. Okay. Yeah. So the question, uh, I'll say it again. At the end, uh, it sounded like you. Yep. So they're mm -hmm. looking to get a product placed in a retail store at JFK. Do you advise getting ACDBE certified in addition to WOSB? So I can take that one because I think maybe he's having some technical yes. difficulties. So um, for any of the purchasing, really, you can't you can't hear me. There's a bit of a delay. Can you hear me? Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, okay. Yep. I was just going to say that. Great. Um, I was just going to say that. Yes, for all of the um, the deals that Ashley has talked about, all of the contracting opportunities, all of the, uh, and any of the purchasing uh, that's going on um, th at either of the terminals, uh, there are ACDBE goals. That's airport concessions, uh, disadvantaged business enterprise goals. So uh, it's a great time to start that process if you're not ACDBE certified. Um, and certainly send uh, send us a message, send me a message uh, to info U URW at rfwconsultants.com and we can help you get started in the process to getting certified. Thanks, Quentin. I see we have a lot of first time viewers on who are new to the process. First, thank you for letting us know you're on. One question we got in that I'll answer is, will, will this web webinar be available to review offline? And the question is yes. So we will post this webinar and email it out afterwards. It'll be posted on our website. Uh, and all of our outreach session webinars are posted there. So if you are new, we'd encourage you to go back and take a look at previous webinars too. There may be information that you find useful um, on our website. Ashley, our next question is for you. 
We don't have a local product, but we are looking to bring in a missing travel need to the airport. Are you accepting applications for retail partnerships? Always accepting applications. I think Quinton and his team are a very good place to start so that, um, you know, we can do the intake, we can understand who you are. Um, you know, airports are not for the faint of heart. So I will say it's definitely a challenge to get your start in airports without a kind of a proven street side um, concept, albeit not impossible. Um, so Amy, in that, in that case, I would recommend touch base with Quentin and his team, um, do the intake, understand, help us understand who you are. And then we, you know, so we can determine if it would be a good fit for, for the airport programs. Great. Thanks, Ashley. Another question for you. So can you please describe if a specific wholesale pricing pricing threshold is required for F&B? We've sold our baked goods in Whole Foods and really took a financial loss in order to strike a wholesale agreement with them in negotiations. So I can only touch on so much. I think the um, the in-person event would be really valuable for you know people who are curious about this question to get more detail. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about how it works. So URW as the concession um, agent in these cases, we do the um, agreements with the primes, right? Or let's say the, whoever's operating the space. So we do a deal with the prime, the operator. In turn, the operator does a sub agreement with wholesalers who they work with for their, you know, their different products in their shelves. Um, this would be a really great question for those primes who I mentioned who will be at the September event to understand the pricing kind of model and dynamic. So um, I think, you know, it's not a one size fits all, unfortunately. It's probably dependent on the airport. It's dependent on the space. It's dependent on the product. It's dependent on kind of the, the productivity of that product, right? So there's a lot of factors um, that go into the pricing models. Um, so again, I would say come to the event in September and ask some of these hard questions to uh, the guys who have the answers. Thanks, Ashley. Another question for you. My type of products can be sold in vending machines. Would you work with a vendor who would want to sell in vendor machines and are snack brands also up for consideration? So we do have an automated retail is what we call vending in the airport space. It's not um, any automated retail or vending that we introduce into the airport environment is not like you, you know, your grandmother's vending machine with Coca-Cola's for a dollar, right? They're very modern, high tech, usually mobile or digital component. They're beautiful wrapped machines that kind of bring the brand to life. Um, we have a program set up around that. So I would encourage you to come to the event and touch base with Quentin and the RFW team, um, again, to do the intake so we can, you know, track your interests, we can meet you, we can learn more about you. Um, and then as far as sn snacks go, I mean, look, snacks are really great for the travel essentials, um, you know, environment. That's where I, when I'm traveling, I stop in there to get a water, probably a sweet treat or sour and, you know, some chocolate, right? So like, I feel like that type of product would be a really good fit um, for that type of store. Um, so again, I would come to the September event, you know, with your, with your samples, um, which we'll, we'll give you more information about in the next week or so, like I mentioned. Thanks, Ashley. We did get a question about Quentin's contact info. Uh, I think the best way to get in touch with Quentin is to email infourw at rfwconsultants.com. So uh, that team is going to give you, uh, that will go to our entire RFW consultants team of which Quentin is uh, part of that intake team and he will be able to support and answer any questions. All right, Ashley, another question for you. What is the approximate financial obligation to participate as an That's F &B right, Amy. We can generally respond uh, within 24 hours. Thank you, Quentin. Appreciate that. Um, Ashley, question for you. What is the approximate financial obligation to participate as an F&B concession stand owner at a QSR? So um, completely different subject um, with a completely different 
requirements, rules, right, what have you. Um, what I will say about that is um, airports are very pricey. So, um, you know, the cost to build is usually two to three times what you would see on the street side. Um, and as a direct operator, you would be responsible for 100% of the build cost. Um, you know, 500 foot space likely costs a million dollars upwards to build, right? Especially QSR, it's a very small footprint, but it's all machinery and equipment, right? So your cost per square foot is a little bit higher than what you'd see in like a full service restaurant. Um, from there, you have op operational staffing costs, you have the long term kind of viability of the business, the product. Um, so, you know, I, w I can't, without kind of knowing specifics, it would be hard for me to kind of give a range, but I will tell you, these are very big programs. They require some level of sophistication. They require some level of uh, experience. And, you know, the rents are, they are not, um, they are not what you would see on the street. They're typically like a minimum annual guarantee, which is what we call a floor. And then there's a percentage rent or greater of the two. So from a macro perspective, you know, there's a guaranteed dollar amount that the that the landlord receives. And then, you know, anything above and beyond that hits a percentage rent scale um, from a margin perspective. So again, you know, lots of different ways that that can go depending on the space, depending on the brand, depending on the location within the terminal. Um, but again, Quentin and his team is your first stop. If you have interest in something like that, we'll have different sessions for those type of things. Thanks, Thanks, Ashley. Ashley. Quentin, a question for you. I am MWBE and Port Authority of New York, New Jersey certified registered. Do I need more certifications? You're on mute, Quentin. Uh, it's always good to have uh, certifications. Um, uh, and it just connects you and makes you uh, helps you to be more eligible for opportunities. Specifically, though, for the concessions programs in all of the terminals, not just new terminal one and uh, terminal eight. Uh, the goals are based on uh, those those firms that are ACDBE certified. Again, uh, that's airport concessions DBE certification. Um, so uh, we can go over, we can review the requirements uh, for that certification. Again, just uh, shoot me an email at infourw at rfwconsultants.com. And we'll go over that and we'll help you get started in the process. Amy, if Thanks. I could add. Um, so the MWB certifications are through the state of New York in this case. Um, those apply mostly to the construction piece of our business. Um, we do not track goals for MWBE against our concessions program. The goal that we track for concessions is the a airport concession disadvantaged business enterprise. So to Quinn's point, it, it helps to have as many as you can certify or qualify for, depending on what you're looking to do or to accomplish. Thanks, Ashley, for that clarification. A question for you, Ashley. We are a certified MWBE and DBE company who offers wellness service and products with a focus on organic aromatherapy. Are there wellness retail spaces that are planned who needs products and service providers? Um, so in the case of Terminal 1, um, because as you heard Dana say, that's a 2026 opening that, you know, that is um, yet to be determined. I think we're going to finalize that through the end of the year. Um, wellness products, in my opinion, can show up in lots of different capacities or in lots of different spaces. You, you know, you'll see some specialty stores that have a wellness section at times, um, especially with kind of the international customer, you, you know, especially um, in some of these long haul flights and, you know, you're getting on a flight for 12 hours versus going on a quick two hour flight, you know, somewhere in the region. Um, wellness is very important. So it is something we look to bring to life in the terminal. Um, again, I would want to kind of know who you are. I'd want to understand your business, what you offer. Um, the more, you know, myself and my team know about you and your business, the more we can help to plug you in to different opportunities. So, um, I do think whomever asked that question should look at the airport concession 
disadvantaged business certification through Quinton's team. Um, I, a DBE is not the same thing as ACDBE, and I know we use a lot of acronyms in the airport space, but the ACDBE is king when it comes to concession. Thanks, Thanks Ashley. Ashley. Regarding local, local product selection, are you exclusively looking for products from New York City or are you open to companies from New York State as a whole? Uh, we want them all. We certainly want them all. I think, you know, certainly JFK is disruptive to the local area and, um, you know, we want people to, to, we want to be able to give back and people to feel like when they come to New York City, they're kind of getting a sense of that place, of that culture that's kind of in our back back door. Um, but uh, there's some really great regions of New York that, you know, we will not be discounted, right? So um, depending on the product, you know, different regions of New York are known for different things. We Those are the type of, of pieces we want to kind of see as well. Great. Thank you. Um, getting a couple questions around dessert products. So I will give these to you, Ashley. Uh, the first question is, should we bring our dessert products to this in-person event? Oh, so I love dessert myself. So I love this question. <laughs> um, hold that thought. We will confirm that within the next week or so. Um, obviously, there's some logistical pieces to that we need to sort through. Um, but that is something we would like to do if we are able to, if, if the venue can accommodate. But hold your hold your horses before you start cranking up the production. Another, Another question on dessert. I sell over 30 flavors of dessert cups, and I wonder if my products can be part of a vending machine. Would you accept products for vending machines? So, um, sounds delicious. The um, Port Authority Health department requires sinks for any food um, that is not shelf stable. So without knowing a ton of detail about the dessert cups, I think um, it's it's tough to sell food products through a vending machine because, you know, it's not the same as an employee who's, um, you know, checking refrigeration tents, discarding old products, um, you know, those type of things. So putting food products that are not shelf stable through an automated retail machine are typically not um, approved by the health department. Now, again, I don't know all the details, so I would encourage, you know, that business to come forward at the in-person event that we can kind of understand more and, and meet with Quentin and the team as well. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, Quentin, Ashley, uh, one of you may be able, to, be able to answer this. Is the application for the Institute of Concessions open at the moment? I know I saw that they had launched their, uh, their third cohort, but is the application process open? To tell you the truth, I'm a little, um, I'm, I'm not as informed about that process, uh, but I'll certainly find the answer for you. Are you welcome to send me uh, um, and just an inquiry on info URW at rfwconsultants.com. I'll definitely find out for you. Yeah, so Amy, on a quick Google search here, um, they're taking uh, applicants until September 10th at new, uh, 11.59 p.m. Sorry. The power of Google. Thank you, Ashley. A little quicker <laughs> than me. <laughs> um, Another question here, um, Ashley, how can someone contact you? Mm. LinkedIn is a really good way to get in contact with me. My team always is teasing me about my um, engagement on LinkedIn. So certainly um, that is one way in the short term. And then in the long term, I will be at the event um, in person in September as well. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, a question for Quinton. So is there a reciprocating certification from other states? Yes. So if you are uh, outside of New York and New Jersey, um, if you're, as long as you're certified ACDBE in your home state, then you can also apply for an interstate uh, certification uh, through the Port Authority. So the Port Authority will certify you based on your home state certification. Thanks, Quentin. 
Um, today we received a lot of specific product questions. We received a lot of questions on certification. I would really just encourage you to reach out to Quinton through the info. I'm going to spell it out so everybody makes sure they have it right. So it's info, I-N-F-O-U-R-W at R-F-W and then consultants.com. So that is a great first step, um, as I know that probably hearing all of this information and hearing the Q&A, now you have probably even more questions that are very specific to your certification status or your product status. So definitely encourage you to reach out to infourw at urwcot.com. Um, at this time, I don't see any other questions. So um, I want to thank the audience for your participation in today's session and to our panelists for lending all of your expertise. So as a reminder, if you registered for this session, you are going to be receiving a link to the recording. It'll also be posted on our website. And remember, using the QR code, you can now register for the in-person event. And in about a week, you're going to receive more information as well that's going to tell you about that event and how to be prepared. So um, thank you again for joining us today. We really look forward to this journey as we work in partnership to create a new JFK, and we hope to see you in a few weeks. Again, we're bringing up the QR code so you can scan, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.